Good afternoon. My name is Gregory Morgan and welcome to Love Talk. I am here to answer your questions and speak with you and discuss with you about the issues that arise in our relationships, particularly the relationships in couples between men and women. Those are particularly difficult relationships to pursue, but there's also the relationships between the various generations in the Iranian community that have a great separation, a huge gap in, in, in their reality. The model that I use to work with people is a model called transformation. It's a model about causing rapid shifts in your perception and in your awareness uh, in how you see your life. It is not about exploring all of the things in your past that have created uh, unhappiness and misfortune so that uh, it's given you a particular outlook on life and then eventually you go around messing the rest of your life up about that. While that may be interesting, it is not anything that actually causes immediate and rapid change. The examination of past wounds and the going over and over those wounds in detail will not give you access to a future, a life in the future that has happiness, that has power, that has insight, that has compassion, that is, has something that you're excited about getting up every morning and going doing that literally fulfills the purpose of your life and answers the question, why am I here? So really, the model of transformation is all about why are you here? I believe that each of us is an infinitely powerful and joyous being that has come into this life not because we had to, not because of there's some bad karma or something that we've had to work out in the past, but because we could, because it's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to have a physical body and to be in this world and to participate in this life regardless of where your life has taken you and what you've done or what you've, uh, uh, or the bad feelings you've felt or the bad experiences that you've had, it is my belief that all of those were there for our growth and development. We have this saying here, you probably, maybe you have it in Iran, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And that's true. That's true in uh, homeopathic medicine. It's, uh, it's true in um, all types of holistic healing. And uh, it's certainly true in nature that the challenge in life, the challenges that face us in life, will either break you down or make you stronger. Here's another call. I'm going to go ahead and take it now. Hello, this is Gregory, and you're live on the air. Hi. I'm calling from Iran. Wow. Uh, this is Reza. Hello. How are you? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, what about you? I'm doing great. Uh, I got married uh, last two years ago. And now I am getting divorced because uh, I I have a mental mentally illness, and I wanted to ask you about that. Okay, you have a mental illness. Are you sure? Yes, yes. Okay. I, yes. What's that? I, what, how does it show I, up? I am used to go to doctor for five years. I have a bipolar disorder. And uh, I, I, I am used to take a tablet now. And uh, uh, for, uh, for one year, I was addict, unfortunately. And uh, I wanted to ask a question about bipolar disorder. I searched okay. that in the Internet, in the, you know, uh, yes. many books, and yes. so on. What do you recommend me about uh, uh, this, uh, you know, Patient, patient. I wanted to thank you for calling me, doctor, but I also want to be uh, clear. I've never pretended to be a doctor. I am not a doctor with a degree, so I am not qualified to give you medical advice. Do you understand? Yes, yes. Okay. Right. Yes. Yeah. I'm not qualified to give you medical advice. I have a vast life experience which qualifies me to give you lots of uh, energetic device and uh, advice, and yes. I'm happy to do that. But I, I just wanted to be clear with people that I'm not a doctor and I'm not pretending to be. Okay? And thank, yes, you, for, yes. and, and thank you for calling me that. I, 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 I take it as a sign of respect and nothing more. Thank okay? you. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Sir Morgan. Yes. So, uh, by the way, uh, so it's what, what 
I know about bipolar is that it is a yes. chemical imbalance and that it is inherited. It, it can be inherited. You're right. So were there, other, were there people in your family before you who had this condition? Yes, you're right. There were. My grandfather has it. Okay. My grandfather has it. My uncle has it now. Okay, I understand. It is a medical condition, okay? Bipolar is a medical condition, and as far as I know, is best treated with medicine, and it is about one of the, uh, the people who watch my show know that I, yes. I do not recommend any kind of drugs for anything because uh -huh. I think uh -huh. that you, as a, as a human being, regardless of your medical condition, you are energy. Yes. You are pure energy. Your body is made of energy. Okay. Your spirit is made of energy. All of your mental conditions are made of energy. And the chemicals in your body are all made of energy. Yeah. Okay? Yes. Now, yes. there are profound and very effective meditation practices that are... Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're that, right. That, Absolutely. That can actually shift the chemicals in your body and balance even bipolar, okay? Yeah, okay. It's okay. possible, okay? It is possible. It would take extreme discipline, and I wouldn't try to do it if I were you. I would only attempt to do it yes. with the instruction of, a, of somebody who was a master at this. Yes, yes, yes. you're right. I thank you. I'm, I'm respectful. Uh, I'm uh, thankful about you. Um, I have to go. Okay. I, I'm really honored that you called all the way from Iran. Thank you very much. I have uh, many people you, who Morgan. write to me from there, thank and I you, appreciate Mr. it. Morgan. You're absolutely welcome. About my English, English language. Your English is great. Great? Yeah, it's better than my Farsi. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's nice of you to say so. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, if I can ever bye -bye. be of any help, let me know. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Wow, that's great. So, uh, for that gentleman that just called, I, I, I want to acknowledge that there have uh, been very severe times in my life where I've been extremely... Uh, depressed and extremely happy and that would be and 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 that is the nature for those of you who don't know what bipolar is uh, you could be extremely happy and carefree and then extremely depressed and suicidal uh, you can and, and it swings that's why I say from one pole to the X bi bipolar it swings wildly and it has to do with uh, and, and we all do that naturally. You do that, I do that. Every person I've ever met gets happy, gets sad, sometimes extremely happy. Sometimes, that doesn't make you bipolar. It's when it's all the time and it's very severe. And uh, it's almost impossible to live with people like that or, or for them to live with themselves. The one thing I would say to bipolar people is I would caution you about having children because they're going to be that way probably. And so uh, I wouldn't wish that on the future generation. And so uh, I know that's a radical thing to say, and I'll probably get a lot of people being mad at me over that. But it's not a good idea to create more bipolar people uh, if you yourself are pretty miserable. Uh, so that's, that's, that's my opinion about that. I'm going to go ahead and take these calls. Hello, this is Gregory, and you're live on the air. Hi. Um, I love your show. I have to begin with that. Thank you. I appreciate that. It really means a lot to me. Great. Um, let me get straight to the point. Okay. Um, I am 22 years old, and um, I have been kind of going on dates for a while. Okay. And um, look-wise, I think I, I look okay, decent, I guess. My friends tell me <laughs> I look all right. Okay. The main problem is most of the times I do wonderful on first, first dates. I have um, great conversations, and it usually goes great. But after that, I always get super, super quiet for some reason. And okay. um, I guess I keep thinking about talking and thinking about bringing up the next topic, and I can't. And it always gets to a point that I become super, super uncomfortable with the other person, and I guess they kind of feel uncomfortable. And um, I don't know what it is. And uh -huh. um, I don't know. I was just wondering if you could help me. Do you know what it is? I'll tell you what it is. Okay. <laughs> you have your attention on yourself. And when you're, you have your attention on your feelings, am I being smart, am I being charming, am I being cute, am I being this, am I being interesting, and all that, right? 
Exactly, exactly. Okay. I think I overanalyze it. I think um, well, it gets so, to a point that I keep saying to myself, say something, say something, and that makes me not even... Yeah, it's worse. It's terrible. I Listen, I've been there. I know what you're talking about. When your attention is on yourself, you mm. become extremely boring, okay? Because you and I, me too, okay, we're boring, okay? <laughs> we're not that interesting, uh -huh. okay? If I told you everything about myself, you could, I make me could keep you interested for about an hour, and that's it. You know. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, exactly. And, and I mean, if I feel that, always on a first date, I can go on and on, tell, talk about myself, what I would like to do yeah. in the future, and I feel I feel always the first date is like an interview. You talk about yourself, and you ask a whole lot. So I'm going to give you a trick. And I'm, after it's that, not a trick. I just block. I mean, I I'm going to give you a clue. Out, okay. But... Listen up. I'm going to give you a clue. Okay. Okay. Here it is. The most interesting person in the world is the person who is interested in you. So that's true across the board. If you're with somebody, guess how to become interesting? Be interested in them. Take your attention off of yourself, put it over there on them. Okay. What do you like? What do you don't like? Oh, really? If he says, you know, I got a sister, tell me about your sister. Is she older, younger? Does she date? Does she have a boyfriend? Oh, yeah. Just keep being interested in their life, especially with guys. Uh, guys have a hard time talking. They're like all like, am I doing the right thing? And no, 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 right? I even think of questions to come, and then sometimes they just give you an answer, and I'm like, okay, I put the first step. I mean, now you do it, I guess, you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's, not, it's not playing chess. Just keep being interested. It's not about asking the right question or thinking of something to ask. It's actually being interested in what they're saying. It's a shift of your awareness. When your attention is off of yourself and all the way over there being interested in them and what do you like and what do you don't like and how come you like that and do you like cars and no, 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 whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it could be that you're going out with total boring people too. I don't know. Almost everybody has something that they are passionate about. It might be sports, it might be music, it might be technology or computers, but everybody's passionate about something, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. What are you passionate and, I mean, about? In general, I... What are you passionate about? Passion, I like painting, I like art. You like painting and art, right? Now, if I, you and I got in a conversation and I happen to know more about art, which I, you know, what, what's great and what's not, we could probably have a pretty interesting conversation if I kept asking you everything you know about art, right? That's true, that's very Yeah, well, what about that painting? But what do you like about that painter? Why is that painter different from that painter? What's the difference? And then I let you explain it to me. Wouldn't I suddenly be very interesting to you? Yeah, definitely. That would make me an interesting person to you, right? And the more I ask you about art, the more interesting I'm going to become to you. And at the end of the evening, you're going to go, wow, I met this really fascinating guy. And all I did was ask you questions. Yeah. And, and let you talk about something that you are passionate about, right? Right, right. That's So that's the trick. Okay. And that's not just on dates. That's with anybody. Find out what it is that they're interested in. Well, and, I, I mean, and they'll talk forever. Meets me, I can make complete perfect conversations for for a great amount of time. But it's just I think I I really start to feel uncomfortable, and that makes me become really quiet. And, and then mean, that makes him more uncomfortable. Makes the other person even more uncomfortable. And then there's this uncomfortable situation where you're like sitting in the car, or like you're spending time, and you're absolutely quiet for a really long time. Well, here's another thing that I can tell you. Anything that you can identify, you can manage. Anything. As In of, what do you mean? Well, so you're sitting in the car and you're feeling uncomfortable and it's kind of quiet, right? So when you identify that, and by that I mean, wow, we're sitting here in the car and it's really quiet and I'm starting to feel uncomfortable. Don't you just hate it when that happens? <laughs> okay. Right? And you just said that right out loud. True. That's Wouldn't that be pretty interesting? Yeah, definitely. That would like break yeah, it. All of a sudden yeah. it would disappear. <laughs> because you've managed it, you've said it, now it's gone. Right. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, no, no, I perfectly So understand. anything that you can identify, and that doesn't mean just say anything that comes floating across your mind. Right. Right, uh, garbage, but I mean, you know, if you find yourself kind of getting stuck, if you can identify it, you might even say, wow, I got this really uncomfortable feeling in my stomach when I got in the car with you because I get nervous when I meet somebody for the first time. Right. Boom. Wow, it's, that's good. It's gone, right? Yeah, 
that. I mean, you're honest. Yeah, it's gone. And like, wouldn't you, wouldn't you love to be around somebody that could just be that honest and, and comfortable with themselves? That's true. That's true. But I guess at the same time, you don't want to show that you're all that nervous. Too, well, so, right? wh but, but why? <laughs> why not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what's, I mean, consider the alternative. The alternative is being nervous, them knowing you're nervous, neither one of you talking about it, having a boring evening and never seeing each other again because you were just so weird with each other. Yeah, right? No, that's, that's very true. That's very true. Now, that's one scenario. And the other scenario is he knows you're nervous. So what? Guess what? He's nervous too. So he, and maybe he finds that charming. Wow, maybe she likes me. And I mean, the bottom line is, I don't think, I don't think in general, I'm a, I'm a talkative person. I don't think in general, even in, in huge groups, I'm with my friends. I'm not the main person that talks a lot. And I, I tell myself, I'm like, it's okay to be quiet, I guess, sometimes, you know. As you said, people should like you for who you are. But at the same time, I always feel like I kind of get it to a point that it becomes boring. Well, I didn't say that, by the way. I didn't say that people should like you for who you are, but... but you know, you said that I said that, and I didn't say that. Maybe I... <laughs> <laughs> right? You suppo but, and, and you've probably heard it someplace. Uh -huh. But people can't like you for who you are if uh, they don't know who you are, for one thing. And there's no should about it. There's people that I don't like, and I don't think anybody should. Okay. Wow. Okay? I don't think, you know, they're, they're like rotten people. Hmm. And I just don't like them. And I don't have to. No, what, no, there's no rule saying I should like them for who they are. Go sit next to Hitler at a party and see if you like him. You know what I mean? That's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, there's people that just are not likable, and, uh, and, 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 and you don't have to. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, I, I just wanted to say that I, I, I wanted to point out that you said that I said that, but I don't actually believe that myself. So, uh, for the person that you would want to be with, you would well, want them to like you for who you are. I guess. Well, you would want you yes, but then they, if you go around acting like someone you're not, then they're going to like maybe like the person that you're not, and then they'll never like who you are because you never shared it with them. Right. If who you are is I'm nervous when I'm around people, uh, the first time I go out on a date I never know what to say and, and, and it scares me and I'm afraid you're going to think I'm boring, that's who you really are. Yeah. That is you. That's very true. I would like that person if they could say that to me. I would think, wow, that's pretty cool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I've already that's, said it. I've already said that I don't usually open up that easily. I've yeah, that's it. What do you got to lose? Yeah. Right? No, the, exactly. The worst, thing that, the worst thing that could happen is that a guy who is not good enough for you anyhow uh, would say, wow, that's really weird. I don't want to be around somebody that's that honest or that's that close or that's that intimate or that's that real, yeah, right? Because when you're real with people, it kind of force, it doesn't force them, but it calls them to come out of their phoniness and be real with you. And then it's kind of, that's uncomfortable for people. They'd rather stay phony. There's a lot of people that get uncomfortable about around me and also around my wife because we kind of oblige them to be real because we're not going to be fake about anything with them. And so it makes some people uncomfortable. Do you know what I mean? And I mean, we're not doing it in an unfriendly way, but it's just like I'm not going to go around acting phony just so that you can feel more comfortable. That's true. That's right? I'm going to make myself uncomfortable and phony so that somebody else can feel less threatened by my reality, mm -hmm. by my authenticity by my straightness. I only want to hang out with people that, that, that are straight, that are real, that are authentic, that, that, that can be with who I am and I can be with who they really are. I don't care about their phony social facade. Right. Right? right? That's very true. That's yeah. I'd rather spend the time alone. <laughs> I have a lot of fun by myself anyhow. <laughs> you know? That's very true. So, so you suggest that I should mostly ask questions things that they're interested in and find out what they're passionate about the sooner you do that the better it's going to go uh -huh. right no no that's very true that's it, very you know if, if they like something that's there's certain things that are like boring to me right I mean and you know if somebody says well I, I collect stamps sorry for you stamp collectors right that's boring to me <laughs> I cannot get interested in that I you know I mean I've, I could be interested that they're interested but I wouldn't have a very long conversation about it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Right? But, I mean, if they're interested in computers or cars or mountains or just about anything, I can talk to them about it because I know at least a little bit about it. Right. That's true. Right? That's very true. Definitely. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. your help. Go get them. Let me know how it turns out. All right. Definitely. Okay. Bye. Hello. This is Gregory. You're live on the air. Oh, hello. Hi. How are you? Fine. How are you? 
Good. Uh, actually, uh, I have a question. I have uh, two children. They are uh, teenagers. One is uh, 14 and the other one is around 15 and a half, almost 16, you know, in three months. And boys or girls? Uh, the older one is boy and the younger one is girl. Yeah. The reason I call you because I cannot make, uh, you know, any connection with them. You know, they're always in their room doing their homework and Whenever I sit with them, and as you told the other lady that talk about the thing they are interested, um, they don't, uh, you know, um, willing to talk to me. For example, if I, uh, my son is like soccer and sports, and when I ask, uh, you know, some question, he just gives me short answer, and he says, why you ask this question? I'm not interested to talk to you, and... It hurts me, but I don't know how to be uh, more in their words. Do you speak to them in English or Farsi? Um, both. Both? Do they mostly speak English or Farsi with their friends? Uh, English. Uh-huh. But their Farsi is good. Their Farsi is good? Okay, good. Matter the, the language it doesn't matter. But well, there's several things that are going on. Okay, one of them is that uh, not only are you from a different culture, like you're from Iran and you speak Farsi and you're their mother, and they're, they consider themselves to be from, are you, are you calling from Canada or United States or where are you calling from? Uh, U.S. U.S.? And so they, they're kind of from America, right? Did they grow up here? Yeah, they're born here. So they feel like they're kind of from America and besides their kids and their interests are not the same as your interests, so there's a little bit of a disconnect already. You know, just because they grew up here and you grew up over there. So this is very typical in Iranian culture, especially in, in this age group. They just have different interests, okay? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it's, it's kind of unfortunate because they're missing out on a huge, uh, beautiful uh, culture in many ways uh, that, that, that they, well, well I, I know that they appreciate the culture, but I don't think they get how deep it is, right? By the way, they are listening to the TV also. Okay, awesome. Great. <laughs> so, and, and, I'm glad. Thank you. Hi, kids. So uh, it, it, uh, they're probably mad at me for calling them kids. But anyhow, uh, the other thing is, and I've raised a son, okay? Uh -huh. And he was the greatest kid. And then by the time he was 14, it's like he was an alien. He's just like a totally different world. I didn't recognize him anymore. He just like, be, he changed up on me, okay? And this lasted until he was about 18 or 19. I just could not like get in communication with him. And uh, I was like an alien had moved in and taken over his body or something, okay? okay? I think it's just something about being a teenager. Then he came back around and we got related again and all that stuff. Do you know what I mean? But there was a period of time when, when we're teenagers, and I don't know if you experienced this when you were that age where it's kind of like adults were like another creature or something. Were you like that? Yes, I did. Yeah, I went like that. I was like that. It's like I couldn't even be around adults. They were just weird to me, right? Uh, in the general, it is not just <clears throat> the teenager, uh, teenager age, but in general, um, as you said, they think that they know more than me. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> I used to know everything until I had a teenager. Now I know nothing. Exactly. <laughs> now they know everything. Uh, whenever I want to talk to them about something, they said we are not interested, and, yeah. um, and again, they think that uh, I don't know anything, and they yeah. don't appreciate my, you know, these years of I am here in America, you know, my experience as a mother. I am about forty years old, and uh, it it hurt me. Yes. I understand. That's a, that's a painful situation. Now, here's the thing. The, the good news and the bad news, the, 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 the bad news is that that'll probably last a couple more years. And the good news is that they do grow out of it. Okay? That, that, does, that does go away. It's just inevitable that sooner or later you figure out that you really don't know everything and that your parents really loved you and took care of you even when you were monstrous with them. And... Uh, that one day you 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 finally figure out how much they gave you and 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 you and you're really truly grateful, aren't you grateful to your parents for all they gave you? Uh, yes, I did. I mean, but I not, am. Not uh, you know when I was at their age, probably. Not when you were at their age, but now that you're that you're a mature adult and you have kids of your own, 
don't you just like thank you, mom, for like teaching me this and and you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm grateful to my parents for the things that they gave me, even though at the time I couldn't stand to be around them. Yeah, but the uh, the uh, fact is, uh, no children is uh, happy about uh, the way their parents treat them. They always think that yeah. they are unfair. They are you know unjust. <laughs> they are not. You know, giving them as much as they want. You know, I think it is a it is a common thing. Is that right? Well, it is a common thing. But here's the thing too. Also, uh, when you told me how your son spoke with you, it kind of made me angry because it's so disrespectful. Mm -hmm. You know, he has no idea how unselfishly you have given to him and uh, how much you've given to him and how much he owes you. Mm -hmm. You owe him nothing. I'm going to tell you this again, just in case you didn't hear me, and I hope you really get this. As a parent, you have already got your job done, okay? By doing what? Bringing... They're alive, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> they live in a nice house? Yeah. They have nice clothes? Yeah. Do they have all kinds of cool electronic gadgets and toys to play with? Do they get to go on vacations? Do they have money in their pocket? Do they get food anytime they want it? I think you got your job done. Yes. Uh, okay. I, I do not get anything they wanted, or you know, you know, because they 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 demand a lot, you know. Well, yes. I'm not talking about their their infantile will to power. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about their their childish uh, 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 will to uh, be in charge and and have anything they want. I'm not talking about that. Okay. I'm talking about. Do they really have everything that anybody could want? Yes, they do. Yes, I, I believe that uh, because I know lots of Iranian families and all of the kids have more than they could ever want, than most people would ever have. Okay, they always live in nice houses with lots of clothes and cars and electronic gadgets and cool stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that your kids are very, very, very well taken care of. I think, um a parent is a good parent uh, because uh, he or she give everything that children Not necessarily. Want to them. They, they should know about that. But my question No, wait, 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 wait. I don't happen to agree with you. Mm -hmm. I don't think that a parent giving a child everything they want is a good parent. No, it's not. <laughs> okay, because you see the result, don't you? Yeah. The end result is they don't respect you, they talk to you like you're a dog, and tell you to go get them some more stuff. All right? So here's the thing. Just because you're a 40-year-old mother doesn't mean that you're done growing. You, you have some more growth and development to go in areas that you never thought you would have to grow and develop in. Mm -hmm. You know, when you get 40 and your kids are kind of grow up, you kind of feel like, okay, I'm done. I'm, I'm finished growing and developing and learning and all that, I'm right? I'm working on myself. You know, I have a business. You know, I do my own, you know, stuff. But... Uh, the problem is, I think the connection is uh, is cut between us, and I don't like that. But uh, you know, I would like to know that during this time, what I need to do. You know. Well, you can be interested in them, and if they and if they're not interested in being in, in communication, that's one thing. But allowing people to treat you disrespectfully is an issue that you have to deal with in your own life. What do you mean by that? Well, you, you mentioned how your son spoke to you. I'm not interested in talking to you. Why are you asking me this? Yeah, yeah. Look, if, if, if you walked over to somebody in a party and asked them a question just to be nice and to be interested in them, and they said that to you, what would you think? You would be outraged, right? Yeah, I know it is. It is that's why it's hurt, hurtful. But well, it is hurtful, and don't allow people to hurt you. I don't know what to do. Tell them, don't talk to me that way. Yeah, if, I told them. Talk if you talk to me that way, it's going to have a cost. And the first cost is going to be that, you know, I'm going to take your cell phone away. or I'm, You know what I mean? Do not interact with me like that. Mm -hmm. Okay? You have a right as a parent to impose certain boundaries. And one of them, the very minimum one, should be that you're treated with respect. Mm -hmm. Minimum. Minimum boundary. They start treating you disrespectfully. Here's what happens. Whether it's the, the girl or the boy, whether it's the, the, the young man or the young woman, 
they will then give themselves permission to treat other people disrespectfully, thus becoming the kind of person that nobody really ever wants to be around. Do you understand? They just, uh, uh, and you know people like that, right? Adults that are still acting like teenagers. Yeah, I know people that are, that are like that in my life. I mean, they're not in my life because I don't allow people like that around me. Yeah, I many times told them that uh, you hurt me, and, uh, and uh, sometimes they said sorry, but they repeat it again. Yeah, you know, well, because uh, it has no cost. Them, their computer, their cell phone. Uh, for example, my son gets uh, outraged and said, um, say more bad thing to me, why you do that? Uh, he said, if, if you think that by this thing I... Um, you know, do better, uh, be careful, I don't. Well, it's just his manipulation and trying to uh, dominate and control and, and be in charge. And, and it's, it's, look it up, it's called infantile will to power. Yes. Have you ever seen a two-year-old, I want this, uh, right? Yes. That's an infant trying to be in control of the adults, right? Well, you're supposed to grow out of that by the age of four or five. But some mothers allow their children to get all the way to the age of 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and still act like that with no cost to them. Yeah, uh, from Oh, the you hurt me. You, oh, you hurt me is not a cost. It's just like, well, so what? That's how they feel about it. I'll hurt you some more. That's how they think. Because there, it's an infantile will to power. We call it, another term for that is called a petty tyrant. It's a little tyrant. <laughs> right? I'm going, it's a petty tyrant. They go around making demands and cussing everybody out and giving everybody orders and being a big pain in the butt. Okay? Yeah. You, you know, if you want to raise some petty tyrants to, you know, dominate your world, then have no boundaries. Let them step on you with no cost to them. No, I give them punishment for, okay. you know, their Good. behavior, but... You know, sometimes uh, it is too many disrespectful action, you know, sometimes... It builds up, right? Yeah, because uh, my husband is not home most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's Do they treat him that way? Um, less than me, but sometimes uh, because they get used to it... Uh, what would happen if, it, if they talked to their dad that way? Oh, uh, he um, actually sometimes he... Uh, yell at them. Sometimes he uh, talks to them for a long time. And yeah, and see, men men have different kinds of boundaries. Men men are less likely than women to let people mess around with them because we have big egos and because we're very willful in the world and because other we we we're very competitive with other men as well out in the business world, right? So you don't let we don't let people bump into us as much. People like step on our toes, we like go, hey, back off. So we're a little more like that. Whereas women are a little more accepting, and perhaps women from your culture happen to be a little more accepting. They kind of like, oh, okay, you know, they let, that, they let that go. They might cry about it or say, hey, you hurt me, or please don't do that. But they don't say, hey, I'm not putting up with that. Stop it. Okay. Okay? So you mean I'm not suggesting you get in fights, but I'm suggesting you stand up for yourself. Yeah, I'm maybe taking uh, taking uh, their belongings, some of the things they like, like cell phone or computer. Or yeah, why, why, why would you supply things like luxury items to somebody who treats you like a dog? Why do that? Because uh, their children at their age... Uh, They're not children anymore. I, I know. They're the not children. A child is something like 10, 11 years old, and then after that it starts changing. They both have uh, hormones that are capable of producing children themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay? Either one of those children could be a parent right now if they wanted to be. Yes. And you, you know it, right? Yes. They're not kids. Sorry, they're young adults. They need to, and with that comes responsibility. And part of responsibility means being civil with the people who supply you with everything you eat, everything you wear, every, every item that they own was supplied by you guys, right? Did they, did they go out and earn money and buy any of that stuff? Uh, for the, actually some of them, my son uh, works and uh, okay. he earned money. 
Okay. Well, don't take that stuff. That's his. <laughs> I take the, the stuff. Uh, well, I, that's what I'm suggesting. I'm sleep. That's what I'm suggesting. Plus quit giving them principle. Quit, quit treating them like a king and, 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 that, and you're nobody. And, and then when they treat you like nobody, then you get hurt and complain about that, but you keep treating them like a king. I wish somebody would uh, give me everything I wanted and I could just treat them like a dog. Not really, but I mean, you, can you imagine? Yeah, don't, don't put up with that. Yeah. It's, it's unhealthy for them. Especially... It's unhealthy for you, but it's unhealthy for them. It's your te what are you teaching them? You know, when they are with some of our relatives, like grandmother, grandfather, they are very respectful, very caring, very mm -hmm. yeah. sweet with them. And I just was surprised <laughs> yeah. how they change, you know. Yeah. They want to talk to them, spend time with them. Okay, well, the, you may have some unfinished business with them, too, and... and, and um, you're welcome to call into my office and set up an appointment and I can spend some time with you and them so that you guys can begin to set up some healthy boundaries, okay? Thank you so much. All right. Good luck to you and uh, thank you for calling. Thank you. All right. Bye. Hello. This is Gregory. You're live on the air. Hi, Gregory. Hi. How are you today? Uh, you know, I have read uh, Girl Talk from yeah. Azita, Azita's mm -hmm. book. I listened to your CDs. Those were wonderful. And thank I you. have two teenagers, one 14 years old and one 12. The reason I did this, mm -hmm. because I have never had boyfriend myself. You know, I married very traditionally, like right. Puzol and what they do in Iran. Early Probably, and uh, arranged marriage and all that, right. They do. And um, the reason I read this and uh, listened to this city is to learn about my kids. And my question is, what is the best time uh, for a girl or for a boy? I know this is a general question, but uh, we can sort of go a little detail. What is the best time? time for them to start to having a boyfriend and girlfriend what is the best age you know best age listen they're going to do it whether you think it's time for them to or not aren't they huh? right if you say you can't have a boyfriend they'll just do it behind your back no i don't tell them no i want oh, okay. them to have and i want to be helpful you know I got it. I've not had well, it. obviously, uh, so they ask me a question. How can I answer them, and how can yeah. I tell anything to them to, that uh, you know, just promote them to a good relationship? You I, know? I, so I understand your question. I'm, I, I guess uh, I want to. Here's my answer: is would be that it may not be that you're asking the right question. Uh huh. Okay. Yes. Uh, the, the question that I would be asking. Uh -huh. it, or that I would rather ha have you asking is, is, is uh, what can I teach my son and daughter uh -huh. about s sexuality and erotic love that would be appropriate to their age group? Yeah, exactly. That's right? Quizzes. Now, that's a little more precise question, isn't it? Yeah. I yeah, because whether they have a boyfriend or girlfriend, I, I think they should have boyfriends and girlfriends. I just don't think they should have sex with them. Uh -huh. Right? Until they're old enough to do that. Yeah, and my question is here in the United States, uh, do the boys propose, uh, do you want to go out with me, or do the girls do that? Well, the girls are doing it more and more, but I don't recommend it. I, 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 no, I personally, I don't recommend it either. if you've listened to my CDs and you've listened to and you've read uh, Zita's book, Girl Talk. Yeah, I read it, yeah. Yeah, uh, the, the, the natural flow of energy in nature is the masculine towards the feminine. Uh-huh. Right? If you look at that, the feminine is always a receptacle, yes? Yes. And even physically, her body is a receptacle. And the masculine is a is a aggressive, penetrating force, both mentally, physically, energetically. Masculine energy is focused outwards. Yes. Yes. And feminine energy is more inwards because uh, because you can give birth inside your body and foster life inside your body. It is very close to your heart. Uh huh. Right. And so sexuality with a woman is up inside her and close to her heart and it affects her profoundly, mm -hmm. yes? yes? Whereas masculine, it's more like, oh, I, I fall in love with this one, then I fall in love with this one, then I fall in love with this one. They're all beautiful. I want to make love to all of them, uh -huh. right? It's just different. They're not wrong for being that way. It's just the way they are. It's the way we are. The nature, yeah. It's, it, you know, we're designed like that, mm -hmm. right? The question is, when a, when a young woman has uh, 
sex at, 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 at an age that's too early, the, the chemicals in her body will cause her to bond with, mm -hmm. like almost be like obsessed by uh -huh. whoever did that, right? Yes. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. and, I was and not so, but, whereas his that attention that. will be off somewhere else probably. Uh, I knew that that is so early and they will never do that themselves, but I was thinking that um, how, as a mother, uh, you, if they ask me, should I encourage them, say, yeah, have a boyfriend, have a girlfriend, or no, just, uh, you know, since I have not had it myself, and I am sort of... Yeah, I understand. So I am sort of out of <laughs> knowledge. However, yeah. I read the book, I listened to say this. I have been here for 15 years. I moved here 15 years ago. But still, I think I'm different, you know. Yeah. But in 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 that culture, the reasons for not having a boyfriend or a girlfriend at early age, right? Yeah. Were moralistic, religion, traditional, cultural. Traditional more, not religion. I'm not a religious. Well, I know, but I mean the basis of them. Yeah, uh, the, what may, maybe you weren't religious, but your grandparents might have been. Yeah, or probably. their grandparents, but somebody along the line set that tradition up and then it just became the way it is. And mm -hmm. traditions are powerful because, you know, you can get stoned for breaking traditions, right? Yeah. Right? You didn't even do anything wrong, but they said you did, so you get killed over it. Yeah, you, I know. You know? And, and it, now, the same thing in another country is kind of like so, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's having your hair uncovered or wearing your, a skirt instead of a long thing or, or whatever it is, right? Putting on makeup. Uh -huh. Get you killed over there, uh -huh. right? I've seen videos that I'm infuriated and traumatized by of, of, of young women being beat to death yeah, in yeah. the street with Iranian men, husbands, brothers, sons, photographing them with their camera like it was interesting. Yeah. Instead of jumping in and standing over her and fighting for her life, fighting even if it life. cost them their own. Yeah. yeah. I guarantee you that would not happen around me. I would, I would rather die than live with myself watching somebody else beat a woman to death. Yeah. That's yeah, just me. I Sorry. I and I wish even, more even men were I like me. I was in Iran in the revolution time and I wasn't at the war time. I never looked at those. Shame on those men. I'm, 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 I'm ashamed of them. But my problem is, however, I am not a religious person, uh, and my parents were not religious. Maybe grandparents have been. But this in tradition which I have had, I'm trying to adapt myself uh, and then somehow be relaxed and comfortable for my own children, for my yes. teenagers. So look, uh, yeah, here's the I am thing. Looking for some way to Draw the line with sexuality. Old, yeah. Okay, draw the line with sexuality. I'm going to give you a brief synopsis, and I hope the guy that was asking about love is, is still listening. There's five kinds of love. All of them are platonic except one. So there's maternal love and paternal love. That's platonic, no sex, right? Your mother loves you, your father loves you. There's the love between children and parents, uh -huh. right? Yes. No sex, normally, right? If, right. if there is, we, we're shocked by that, and we want to do something to the people that do that, right? We're, we're, we're offended as a, as a people for, about that. Between brothers and sisters, it's called fraternal love. No sex still, right? Yes. Not supposed to be, anyhow. It's usually not sex, right? And then right. that carries out to friendships. That means equals to equals. In other words, fr friends to each other. When you're friends, you don't have sex. Yes. Right? Right. Then there is erotic love, and that, in sh that involves anything that, it, that involves the exchange of body fluids, if you will, okay? Yes. Whether it's kissing, any of, that is erotic, mm -hmm. right? It, it involves, it, it, it stimulates a primal part of us that has to do with procreation, has to do with life and death, has to do with survival of the species, mm -hmm. it has to do with, uh, with lifelong commitments. Those kind, this kind of love will change your life, yes. right? It's life altering, that kind of love. Mm -hmm. and, 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 it's, and it's erotic because it involves your very physical being, right? Yes. So it's very profound. Not, you're not ready for that at 14. Yeah, of course not. You're just not, okay? And, and, <laughs> and so you can have love, and you can have very powerful love, and, and certainly there's an innocent exchange of sexual energy that takes place between boys and girls anyhow. 
you know, I mean, they look at each other, they play with each other, there's banter, there's holding hands, there's all kinds of erotic, if you will, uh, innocent sexual exchanges that are perfectly acceptable. Uh -huh. Wouldn't you say? And I'm not saying this from a, a moralistic point of view. I'm just saying they're not, they're good for you. Uh -huh. That's good for you, I think. Yeah. You know, but when it comes to the actual sexuality, uh -huh. I'm sorry, but especially young girls are just not ready for that. It, yeah. it alters their body in a way that they become like obsessed uh, by the guy that gave them an orgasm, if you will, you know, and it's, it, it, it's, 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 and then you got a whole bunch of problems that you wouldn't normally have, and it's just, you know, avoidable, okay, yeah. better to avoid, so, uh, and, and as for young men, well, uh, it, it's, it's just a totally different, it's a totally different thing, you know, it, it really is, and I don't mean it for any moral reasons, it's not because I think, what's okay for boys is not okay for girls, but, okay. but they don't get as crazy about it. I know. Do you know what I mean? They just like, you know, they're, they're not as crazy about it as uh, uh, girls get really seriously uh, 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 upset about it. If, if a guy has sex with a girl and she doesn't call him the next day, he's not worried. It, it, it's like, oh, okay. Right? If a girl has sex with a guy and he doesn't call her the next day, it's the end of the world. Yeah. Right? Right. You know, so I understand that you agree somehow, I'm not saying like traditional, teaching my daughter to be careful, to take care of herself, not to have sex. And but let her know why. My boy. Let her, let her know that. why. Tell her, tell her it's, it's for her own good so that she herself would want to be protective of herself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And not protective, maybe that's not the right word, but want the best for herself. Uh, yeah, because I have been very protective of myself. The way I have been trained traditionally, I even have been told with my mom not to talk with boys, be careful, this and that. I am not doing that, but somehow I would love to teach her, you know. I just wanted to get your approval. Yeah, I mean, you want to teach her not, I wouldn't say don't talk with boys. I just say no, I don't say have that, sex with boys, for God's sake, right? Yeah. yeah. Grow, grow up a little bit first. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you for calling. Yes, okay, yeah, I hope this was helpful. That's what she has decided. She's deciding to have her bo boyfriend, her first boyfriend, when she goes to college. She yeah. said, I talk with all of my classmates, but I want to have my first one when I go to college. That's what she told me. Awesome. Yeah. I'm okay. sure you're a great mom. Don't worry about it. You'll be great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. And please say my hello to Aziza. I will do. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, bye bye. Thank you for watching Love Talk. I'll see you here again next week, and uh, have a great weekend. زن دلخواه مردان سمیناری جذاب و شیرین با مطالبی که هرگز نشنیدید آنچه شما در مورد مردان زنان رابطه نمیدانید زن دلخواه مردان سمیناری توسط خانم دکتر آزیتا سایان در پنج شهر جهان ونکوور 13 ژانویه لس آنجلس 21 ژانویه لندن 27 ژانویه روتردام 2 فوریه و تورنتو 12 مارچ 310 460 2600 embracegrowth.com یک مرد منحصر به فرد، مسلط، متمرکز، قابل اعتماد و رضایتمند باشید. کارگاه شرافت، عزت کلام و مهارت به رهبری دکتر آزیتا سایان. تورنتو 21 تا 23 سپتامبر، همبورگ 19 تا 21 اکتبر، ایروان ارمنستان 15 تا 17 آگوست، لس آنجلس 2 تا 4 نوامبر 310 460 2600. در کارگاه های آموزشی بانوان به رهبری دکتر آزیتا سایان با دستیابی به اهمیت و ارزش واقعی خود قدرت زنانگی و آرامش خود را بازیابید. ایروان ارمنستان 7 تا 9 فوریه، لس آنجلس 22 تا 24 فوریه، تورنتو 15 تا 17 مارچ و همبورگ 26 تا 28 آپریل 310 460 2600 
از این پس برنامه دنیای عشق رو از جم یو اس ای روزهای جمعه نه شب، شنبه یازده و نیم شب، یک شنبه یک و نیم ظهر و دو شنبه هشت و نیم صبح به وقت لس آنجلس دنبال کنید. خانم دکتر آزیتا سایان در برنامه دنیای عشق جوابگوی سوالات شما هستند و به مباحث مهمی همچون ازدواج، تربیت فرزندان، افسردگی، طلاق، سکس، همجنسگرایی، خیانت و هزاران موضوع متنوع دیگر می پردازند. برای اطلاعات بیشتر از برنامه ها، سمینار ها و کارگاه های خانم دکتر آزیتا سایان با شماره 310 460 2600 تماس بگیرید و یا از اپلیکیشن و یا وبسایت Embrace Growth دیدن کنید. اپلیکیشن Embrace Growth همکنون در اپ استور. با ساختن اکانت شخصی شما می توانید پروفایل خود را مدیریت و زبان مورد نظر خود را بین فارسی و انگلیسی انتخاب کنید. وقت مشاوره خود را رزرو نمایید. محصولات از جمله سی دی، دی وی دی و کتاب ها را خریداری و دانلود نمایید و یا برای کارگاه ها و سمینار ها نام نویسی کنید. همچنین شما می توانید به برنامه های تلویزیونی و رادیویی دکتر سایان و یا آقای مورگن به صورت رایگان دسترسی داشته باشید. اپلیکیشن شن امبریس گروز را امروز از اپستور دانلود کنید. Welcome to the all new embracegrowth.com. You'll have access to all the content you love at the click of a button. Videos of seminars, events and the ability to sign up for workshops. Direct access to digital downloads right from your mobile devices. Stay in the know and see our latest graduate events. Watch your favorites anytime, anywhere. Visit us today at EmbraceGrowth.com. اپلیکیشن Embrace Growth با ساختن اکانت شخصی شما می توانید وارد پروفایل خود شده و تنظیمات آن را تغییر دهید. به تمامی رویدادها و محصولات دسترسی داشته باشید. با چند کلیک برای سمینارها و کارگاه ها ثبت نام کنید و یا وقت مشاوره خود را رزرو نمایید. اپلیکیشن Embrace Growth را امروز از اپ استور دانلود کنید و به خانواده جهانی Embrace Growth بپیوندید. برنامه دنیای عشق با دکتر آزیتا سایان برنامه ای که تمامی سوال های شما را جواب می دهد ازدواج، عشق، سکس، همجنسگرایی، فرزندان، والدین، خیانت از یوتیوب لایف، لایف استریم، فیسبوک و اینستاگرام لایف سه شنبه ها و پنج شنبه ها ده شب به وقت ایران و ده و نیم صبح به وقت لس آنجلس تلفن تماس با استودیو 818-532-6655